Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, it is always a privilege to be in your presence. It is an honor to be called by your name and so we thank you that we are in your presence, Lord God, worshiping you, enjoying you, fellowshipping with you. We thank you for the ways that you've been speaking to us and through us. And we ask even now as we reflect on your word, that God, your word would be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will create new pathways in our brains and ears and hearts and spirits to receive your word and give us the grace that we need that we might be both hearers and doers of your word. For God, we pray these mercies in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. This morning, I would like to invite us to reflect on the Old Testament reading read from the book of Jonah, chapter 1, the first 15 verses. The book of Jonah is quite the unusual book. In the other books, the major and minor prophets, we read mostly of God's word, God's message to people, God's people, and to surrounding nations of Israel. And we hear of their responses to God's word. In the book of Jonah, however, what we encounter is the experience of a prophet and his response to God's word. I'm dare enough to say that Jonah, in this book, what we encounter is an unfaithful, rebellious, and disobedient prophet, servant of God, who was called by God as God's servant to proclaim a message to the Assyrians, the people in the capital of Nineveh. At that time, the Assyrians were known to be the enemy of Israel. And so the Lord called Jonah saying to him, I want you to go and to cry out against the nation, the people of Nineveh. And Jonah, having his own preferences, treating possibly his, the call on his life as a hobby and not as an honor and a privilege that it is, he responded by not just rebelling against God, but cutting out his own pathway for his life. And so we, what we see is that Jonah got on a ship headed in the opposite direction to Nineveh, and while on that ship, he went to sleep. He decided to do his own thing, and so this rebellious and unfaithful servant of God who was called to foretelling and foretelling to tell of what God would say, says would happen in the future, and also foretelling to proclaim the word of God to God's people, this unfaithful and rebellious prophet was sleeping in the hull of the ship. While he is asleep, the Lord is very much aware that Jonah is being disobedient. And the Bible tells us that a storm arose, a great storm arose. And so the people on the ship, the shipmates, they are terrified. In their own awareness of God, they do not serve God, but in their own sense that there is a God, they understood that this storm was not a normal occurrence. And so they went for, for Jonah and they woke him up and said, you know, why are you asleep? What is, look at what is happening. And Jonah, being very honest, he said that he served the God who made the land and the sea. And so the shipmates, they have more sense than Jonah 
that they understood that what you have done is a terrible thing because without Jonah even saying anything, they understood that he was running from the presence of this God. But how could you run from a God who made the land and the sea? There's nowhere to hide. And so Jonah, it sounds on the surface as though he's being very caring and kind, self-sacrificing. He says, well, throw me overboard. On the surface, it seems that way, but when we get to the heart of the book, reading the other three chapters, maybe this was Jonah's cop out to say, at least I can taste death and not at my own hands. Some people killed me. And so I can get away from completing God's assignment on my life. The men have more fear for God and they do not want to take that option. And so they try to see if they can get out of this storm the efforts were futile. When they could not outrun, outsail this storm, they decided they prayed to the Lord asking for forgiveness. Do not let the blood of this man be on us. And so they threw Jonah overboard. What we see, church, in this very short book, four chapters, again is a prophet a man, a servant of God, called to be a prophet, called to be the mouthpiece of God, called to demonstrate in his life the will of God, who was rebellious and unfaithful, who treated God's call on his life as though it was a hobby that he could engage in whenever he felt like for profitability or according to the cultural trends. We do not see a, a man who understood that he was God's servant, called to do God's bidding whenever, wherever, and to whomever God chose. And can I tell us today, church, that the modern day Jonah, that in our day, the unfaithful, rebellious, and disobedient servant of God called to be the prophet to cry out the word of God to the nations is the church. That the disobedient prophet today, the rebellious prophet, the unfaithful servant who has chosen to do his own thing, to go her own way, is the church of Jesus Christ in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That the church, like Jonah, has been called by God, bought with God's precious blood, saved, redeemed, and sanctified. That God has appointed the church as God's servant, God's mouthpiece, through whom God must and will at any time display and manifest God's glory in the nations. Yet we see that the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that like Jonah, we have heard God's voice. We have heard his call to cry out against sin and wickedness in the nation. But we have rebelled. We have not only disobeyed God and turned our own way, but we have cut out an, our own paths for ourselves. So much so that the church, like Jonah, puts those around her in danger, that the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, like Jonah, that we treat God's call upon our lives as though it were a hobby, and in cutting out our own path, the church is more concerned with buildings and strategic plans and political mileage and what we can do to gain attention and friendship with the world and those in high places. Yet God has called the church as his own servant. And he says the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is an unfaithful, rebellious, and disobedient servant. Like Jonah, the Lord says that we have slighted his call on our lives that we have heard God's call to us 
to speak out against the wickedness and injustices and corruption in our land that which has seeped into our church but we have turned a blind eye and a deaf ear and we are on our way to Tarshish. And so the Lord speaking to us, the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines today while we celebrate 45 years of independence is saying to us the church those whom he has saved with his precious blood that he needs us his call to us is first of all a call to repentance the lord is calling the church in saint vincent and the grenadines his servant the contemporary jonah that god is calling the church you and me to repentance beloved repentance is not to feel sorry repentance is not to say oh yes that is what we did because we have intentions and we know that sometimes we are late or we, we, we have no control over our mouths and sometimes people like to say it's so messed up everybody knows it's so messed up not true and it's so messed up till me dead so we will confess the faults almost in an arrogant and proud way to say this is who I am everybody knows this is me and I have no intentions of changing but God says I do not want simply confession from your lips I do not want you just to feel bad for a moment I need you to repent and repentance is to have a change of mind having been exposed to the truth of God it is because we have been exposed to the light of who Jesus is that we now see who we are, a rebellious people, a people who are in bed with sin and we can say to God, God I agree with you and I change my mind about sin. You see the church like Jonah needs to repent. You see Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh because in his mind why would God send me to Nineveh, which is God giving Nineveh an opportunity to repent, an opportunity for mercy when they are very evil and wicked? And in Jonah's mind, they deserve death. Beloved, I want us to see that Jonah is not simply having a preference, that he wants to go maybe to the Edomites and not the Assyrians, maybe to the Babylonians but not the Assyrians. No, it is not a matter of preference. You see, Jonah, like you and me today, we need to repent because what Jonah did is to set himself up as God. Jonah had devised his own conscience, a moral understanding and compass separate and apart from God that he was now telling God who deserved mercy and who did not. Jonah had des designed and formatted his own conscience, his own conscience and understanding of sin that Jonah was now the one determining what was sin, what was right, and what was not. Beloved, I hope that we see ourselves in Jonah this morning. That we as a church, we have failed to call sin, sin. In fact, we too, like Jonah, have formatted our own moral compasses. That we do not know what sin is anymore. Sin is determined by who does it and how big their bank account is. Sin is determined by who does it and what color they are wearing on which day they are wearing it. Sin is no longer determined by the Almighty God whose standard is holiness, but sin is determined by my preference. And if it is my friend or my family member or close to me, or if I can get a slice of the pie, that is when it is sin. It is not sin if I stand to profit from it. It is not sin if there's somebody who's doing it and we have the same political affiliations. It's not sin, but it is sin if it compromises me. And how dare we, the body of Christ, 
that we bought with the precious blood of the Lamb, that we should look Almighty God in His face and determine that His holiness standard is no longer the standard that by which we would live, but we will determine our own standard and proclaim that standard to the world. You see, the thing with that standard, the trouble with it, is that it is flexible and wobbly. It's on the river, on the bank. It has no backbone because it is determined by your whims, whims and fancies and my likes and my dislikes. And God says, we need to repent. We need to change our mind about sin, that sin is missing the mark of God. And so if it is your pastor who's doing it, it is sin. It is if it is your church sister who's doing it, it is sin. If it is the prime minister of the land, it is sin. Because God says it is sin. We need to change our minds and look in the light of God and see as a church we have failed God. We cannot talk about sin because we stand among them. And the Lord's message to the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on this beloved 45 years of independence is that you need to repent. But not only that, the Lord says we must repent, but we must also seek renewal. And this renewal is to have a renewed heart. You see, the church has grown callous and cold and hard-hearted and stiff-necked. Read through the book of Jonah. We have a holiday tomorrow and it's a very short book. I'm sure you can do that during your breakfast reading. Amen? You will know that in chapter 4, Jonah is more concerned about a plant than about the lives of 120,000 people whom the Lord says do not know their right hand from their left. In other words, Jonah, you are concerned about yourself and what pleases you and what is there to satisfy you, but it does not break your heart that men and women, boys and girls, do not know me and die and go to a lost eternity. Doesn't that sound like us, church? That we are okay as long as myself and I and my children and my husband and my family, that we are safe and we know Jesus, but we see young men and women in the grips and jaws of sin and it does not break our hearts that they die and go to a lost eternity. That we are more concerned about what satisfies us. The Lord says we need new hearts. We need hearts that are soft and tender. Hearts that feel the blood of Jesus spilling for us again. Where we see men and women no longer through our eyes, but through the eyes of Jesus. Where when we see the homeless and the poor and the orphaned and the widowed, when we see our young people as we are on our way to church, that they are half naked on the road and they do not know the love of God, it should break our hearts. But we go about our lives because all is well with me and mine. And God says, the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, your heart is cold and hard and you need to seek renewal. We need, as the hymn writer says, for a tender heart. A heart that always feels the blood of Jesus freely spilled for us. That we can appeal to this same blood for our sisters and brothers, that we can appeal to this same blood for our co-workers and our neighbors, that we can appeal to the blood of Jesus for those who by day and by night only plot evil 
in our land God says to you and to me this morning that what he desires of us is repentance and to seek renewal the Lord wants us to repent earnestly and to seek him for renewed hearts beloved it is only when we repent and we have gotten new hearts from the Lord that we are then able to respond to the call of God when we repent and we have renewed hearts the Lord says then and only then can you respond to my call on your life a divine obligation has been placed on the church the servant of God the prophet in the land of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to respond to God's call to respond to him in obedience to be faithful to proclaim only what God says we must say and the message is that Jesus saves the message is that there is sin in the land and if we continue we will experience the judgment of God God wants us to respond yes to his call on your life and mine he wants the church in St. Vincent to let go of our divisions and divisiveness and strife and to answer as one voice for he prayed that we might be one and in responding to him that we will cry out it is only in responding to God that we have the power and the authority as the Apostle Paul declared in Acts to speak about sin to cry out in the land to be the voice in the wilderness crying out repent for the kingdom of God is at hand to lift our voices not in unison with sin and corruption but to lift our voices for the sake of the kingdom of God no one else can lay claim to the life of the believer no one else can lay claim to the church of Jesus Christ therefore we must not be anyone's tariffair during election time we must not be anyone's puppy show and toy in this land of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for we are the servant of the Most High God we serve him sacrificially because it is an honor always an honor to serve the Lord and this morning the Lord is calling his church to repent he says turn from your wicked ways let go of the sin that you have been in bed with in unison with in congregation with let go of the sin change your mind about sin sin is missing my mark of holiness the Lord says it is not what displeases you or me it is what displeases the Lord and he says we must seek for new hearts hearts that have been implanted by the Holy Spirit hearts that are tender and soft hearts that know the forgiving power the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus and then and only then can we stand as the oracle of God as the servant of God as the prophet of God in this land and speak thus says the Lord and call the nation to repentance I pray this morning that God's Holy Spirit will do what only God could do and save and redeem God's church sanctify us call us out of darkness yet again break the chains of slavery and sin that have bound us for years to the glory and honor of his name let us pray Lord Jesus you are head of the church 
Lord God, you bought us. You redeemed us with your precious blood. So you have all right, God, to lay claim on your church. We bring to you, Lord God, the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we cry out to you, O God, for your mercy. We cry out to you, God, confessing our sinfulness and our sins. We cry out to you, O God, confessing the idolatry in our churches, the pride and arrogance, Lord God, that, we par that parades itself in your church. We confess the filth, O oh God, from the pulpit to the pews and back. We confess, Lord God, the wretchedness and the evil and wickedness of our hearts, Lord God. That God, it shows in our lives. We are a rebellious people, Lord. Lord, we confess, we see our sin, we see you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to breathe repentance throughout the length and breadth of this nation on every heart that knows you as Lord and Savior. People called by your name, lead us to repentance, O God. And O God, would you change our hearts? Would you transplant, O God, take out the evil heart, the hearts of stone, and give us hearts of flesh again, hearts that love you, heart that, hearts that beat, O God, only for you. Lord God, set us free, we ask you, from all entanglements and relationships, O God, in your church, that we have with sin and the world, Lord God, that restrains and restricts us from answering yes to your call. And Father and God, we ask you to do what only you can do to revive your work in this land. Revive your church, O God. Breathe upon the dry bones, Lord Jesus and raise up a mighty army to the glory and honor of your name. For God, we pray these mercies in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.